<laughs> all right. All right. Today we are going. I'm gonna remove all right. I need to stop saying that. You do say that. I say it like uh, in front of every clip. Yeah. All right. Stepping out. I'll stop saying that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Today we are going to help out Christopher Vo, and he has on his investment property we're going to go through and point some stuff out so maybe he can fix it. We do not have to actually produce a Trek report because this one's already been purchased and he's not planning on selling it. He is going to rent it out so no Trek reports needed which is nice. So we can go around and uh, spot some things out for him and maybe help him help you guys know what we look for on your investment properties. All right let's go check it out. Okay so the first thing that I always like to start out, you're going to notice this across a lot of my YouTube videos, is I always like to start outside and then work my way inside and then work my way back outside again. But the first, this is where you're going to start to determine if your foundation is good or not. And a best place to start is actually kind of like just, I would say, an amateur skill, but a good place to start is you look down the mortar line and the brick line. If you're looking down this brick line and you can see that it's more or less straight, whenever they lay this brick, they lay it with the level and it's straight. So if the foundation moves over a period of time, it will look off. And if it starts to look off, you wanna focus in that area or understand that you might have to have foundation repair in the future. And you know that will increase a lot in your budget down the line. Coming around the corner over here, we noticed that the windows are single pane windows. You can shoot to upgrade them if you like, but you can also put a, a tent over them and the R value will even get close to a double pane window. So whenever you're doing this, you wanna start trying to determine your budget if you want to replace them all. If you do replace them all, of course it's gonna help your sell down the line, but whenever you're in doing investment properties, you're kind of focusing on performance too as well. So right here, if you're wanting to increase the performance of your HVAC system or less sunlight coming in, there are films that you can put over these single pane windows that will help increase their performance. So uh, things you can do to maybe not replace your windows. The next thing is, is you wanna replace all the broken glass. There's a few broken panels over here. Easy spot, a little bit further down, easy spot right here. You can see a loose electrical outlet, no conduit on the electrical. And the rule of thumb is, is with any electrical wires, anything that you can like really grab or touch with ease, it needs to be in conduit. So we wanna protect this outlet properly to help prevent anyone from getting shocked down the line. Pretty easy spot, easy call out. Um, let's just move on to the next item. A little bit further down right here, you can see this, this I, I'd call it a crack what you would call a crack is, um, and you can see this, it's filled with caulk all the way down. And most people, they would see this and be like, oh my gosh, foundation's bad. You know, we need foundation company out here. And of course they're gonna shoot you a bid because they're trying to get the work. But, but you can see how this is straight and it doesn't really break any bricks and it follows the line. This is what I, is called a thermal expansion crack. And that's just kind of happen over time, especially with Texas heat. The brick expands, it contracts at a rate, and then it creates these straight cracks. This is nothing, it's purely cosmetic. And uh, let's move on to the next item. So when we walk around outside, we walk around twice you know i don't i do a close pass and then i do a wide pass on my properties and the wide pass here during the close pass we we pass this up and you can just see from the ground level without even getting on the roof you can see damaged shingles and these damaged shingles are obviously going to be need to be replaced but it also raises alarms well if you have damaged shingles here you probably have something else down the line or on the roof so that's just something that you're going to put into judgment honestly roofs are the easiest thing to repair uh, whenever you're working with your foundation. So, I, not foundation, when you're working with your, your properties. So I wouldn't stress about roofs too much because I feel like that's the easiest thing to fix when it comes to other things like electrical or galvanized water lines or your HVAC system. All right, let's move on to the next one. Coming around the corner, you're gonna hit your condenser. This is gonna kind of judge where you're gonna start wanting to have to put your money. And uh, it's a 2006, you can read it right off the data plate. In 2006, most condensers run at a 15 year lifespan. So as an investor, this is one of those lines where you're like, hey, can I get this working and is it gonna perform? If you're gonna put it up for rental, can I get two more years out of it? But if you can't get two more, if you're not gonna put it up for rental and you're gonna put it up for sale, this is gonna be something that you're probably gonna to wanna to 
to replace or budget for the person to negotiate on because it's very common for anything with R22 in it, an inspector's gonna notify the buyer, be like, hey, this thing's getting old and you wanna be get ready to replace this. So uh, just a strategy that you're just gonna have to really think about when it comes to these units, make sure that they're working. So whenever you're looking at the water heater, you wanna look at the age first and you're gonna judge you want to guess that these things normally last about 15 years. So at 2008, you probably have a little bit of life out of it. So you're only about 11 years old. You can probably get four more years out of it. So I'd flush it out, fill it up, see if there's any leaks, look for corrosion. So they probably can keep this thing. Uh, it has about four or five years left as long as it's not too corroded on the inside. But what concerns me the most is actually the connections at the top. And I noticed that there's galvanized water lines to this issue on this property. With most investment properties, because you're going to be pick, you're going to be picking the older ones, you're going to run into galvanized water lines, and you want to pay to get them repiped. If you're going to rent them or you're going to um, sell them, those are going to show up in your inspection reports, or they're going to leak on you down the line. And there's even evidence of them in another room down the line. And um, let's just go right to that and show you that. Moving into the room where we had the galvanized water leaks, you can see they cut in the ceiling here and they had the two pinhole leaks. This is very common. Pretty much in galvanized water lines, you're going to find some sort of leak somewhere. And this is very hard for home inspectors because it's, is it leaking on the day or not? And this is the reason why on all of our home inspection reports that we're warning people about galvanized water lines, it's just, we might not be able to see the leak today, but it's it's bound to happen. It's just a matter of time. So if you're purchasing a property with the galvanized water lines, just be careful. And then also if you're doing investment flips, which we're working on right now, you always want to repipe them and just get a good uh, PEX plumber out to just do a quick repipe for you and uh, just add that into your budget. Coming around the corner over here, we opened up the panel box pretty much with ease. You didn't need any tools at all. And we found out that they have aluminum wiring. With aluminum wiring, you can have aluminum wiring, it just needs to be installed correctly. With it being installed correctly, you need antioxidant gel on all the switches, outlets, and inside the panel box too. This helps ex reduce them at how much aluminum wiring expands and contracts. Uh, but right here, we also noticed that there's copper too. So we need to find where that copper's going and make sure that they're, it's wired properly because if they're tying it into a, an a, aluminum only outlet, it can cause issues down the line. Um, so be very careful with aluminum wiring and it might even be a good idea to have an electrician come in and check it out for you guys just to make sure that it's up to date. But you can even see this panel box, it's, it's coming close to the end of the life. So they're probably gonna need to replace this anyways. Okay, um, I say we close the video here. So pretty easy uh, spots, just by walking around, you can uh, get an idea of what you're gonna, gonna get into before you even put an offer on a property. So if you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button below and leave a comment. All right, catch you guys on the next one, bye.